Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Roosevelt Williams, and for those out there on Facebook, I'm the senior pastor here at St. John's African Methodist Episcopal Church. We give God praise for you. We want to give God praise today, and let us begin our praise with this morning's announcements. Please note that all announcements must be turned to the church office by Wednesday of each week. You may email <coughs> your announcements to St. John's AME at bellsouth.net. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live and in person for this morning worship service. Please join us in person with COVID protocols or live on Facebook every Sunday morning at 1045. The official board meeting will be held on October the 10th at 6.30 p.m. via conference call. The Couples Encounter Ministry will meet on third Saturday uh, via Zoom. Bring a guest with you. The Couples Encounter Ministry hopes to see you soon. The Singles Ministry will meet on October the 24th via Zoom at 7 p.m. Pastor Williams will be leading our discussion. Our book study is Soul Virgins, Redefining Single Sexuality by Doug Resino and Michael Todd Wilson. It's not mandatory to purchase the book. Our contacts are Demarcus Wings and our Terry Brown. Say the date. Circle this real big and red on your calendars. The Christian Education Department is excited to announce that we will be hosting a full community fall festival for 2022 with the goal to get people connected with each other to others in the community and ultimately of course to god the event will be held on sunday october 30th at 3 p.m the festival will feature a costume fashion show trunk and a trunk or treating provided by auxiliary boards, and we know our auxiliary boards are going to show out with our Christian-themed trunks, the famous crock-pot cook-off, so dust off those recipes, a carnival games, a gaming truck, hayride, live music, free food, and much, much more. Among the many fun fill activities will be a silent auction. We are soliciting your help in making it a success by asking you to contribute items that can be included in the auction. Items that you crafted, baked, no longer use, or need, or items that you would just like to donate will be greatly appreciated. We know we can count on you. We know we can, and so we look forward to everybody working together. And we do need volunteers for our games and things. So if you would like to volunteer, you can see myself or Cynthia Underwood Thomas or Donna Johnson or Hillary Cunningham or Elisa Caffey. And so you can see anybody and say, hey, I'm willing to volunteer. And we will say yes. And so please contact one of us for any volunteer opportunities. Help us to achieve our goals. Contact us today. The Women's Missionary Society, the WMS, is excited to announce that our upcoming annual WMS Day, the components of the WMS families and friends are asked to come and worship and celebrate with us as a church family on the uh, next Sunday. The theme is Women Missionary Society, Prioritizing the Christ in Us. For more information, you may contact Rosetta Brock, the WMS president. Call to action, voters, education, and initiative. We must engage, educate, and empower Alabama voters to step up and make their voice heard. Be sure to check your email for promotional videos. For more information, the call to action point of contact for St. John's is Ms. May Miller. 
St. John's Women Missionary, the TLC, and aid to inmate mothers. We thank you all for helping us to reach our goal and delivering more than 30 purses and totes to aim. And if you have uh, something else, anybody wants to deliver anything, you have not until the end of today and tomorrow morning. Angela will be taking those purses to AIM, and we are just excited that we were able to help them in such a great way. So thank everyone who participated. Now, also Aid to Inmate Mothers, AIM, is seeking volunteers for visitation and story time at the women's facility. If you are interested in volunteering with AIM, you may reach out to Angela Cosby for ADOC requirements and additional information. The Wellness Coalition will be administering free flu and COVID shots at St. John's on Saturday, October 22nd at 9 o'clock, from 9 till 11. Volunteers are welcome and needed. For more information, please contact Evangelist R.C. Strahan. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Remember, love shouldn't hurt. So we want to fight against domestic violence. Jennifer Griffin, a survivor of domestic violence, is requesting our support of a project called A Shower of Hope to be held on October 29, 2022. This project will sponsor the Penelope House Domestic Violence Women and Children's Shelter, which is, donated, which is located in Mobile. The mission of Penelope House is to provide safety, protection, and support to the victims of domestic violence and their children through the provision of shelter, advocacy, and individual and community education. If you would like to donate to this, the shelter is in need of Bibles, baby clothing, uh, sizes newborn to 24 months, diapers on all sizes, baby bottles, hygiene supplies, and toiletries for the ladies. Any financial contributions are asked to be made payable to the Penelope House. And if you're interested, I have an address to that. That is P.O. Box 9127, Mobile, Alabama, 36691. And for more information, you can see me or Tandra McKinney. Join the YPD. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, an annual campaign to raise awareness about the impact of breast cancer. In observance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, please join the YPD in wearing your pink on Sunday, October the 23rd, 2022. Join us for prayer on our prayer line Monday through Friday mornings at 6.15 a.m. and Sunday evenings at 6.15 p.m. The prayer line number is 667-770-1025. And the access code is 418-515. Join us for conference call Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9, 10 a.m. That call-in number is 667-770-1025. The access code is 418515. For more information, please contact our church school superintendent, Ira Simmons. St. John's youth can also attend teen Sunday school class via Zoom at 9.30 a.m. For more information, please contact Terry Brown. Children's Bible Study via Zoom for grades 6 through 9 is held on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. Parents, we encourage you to please uh, let your children join in. And for more information, you can contact Lamarius Whetstone. The Adult Conference Call Bible Study with Terry Brown will be held on Wednesday at 6.15 p.m. The call-in number is 605-313-5862. And the access code is 540310. We are studying uh, the 40 days through prayers of Jesus. And so we finished up experiencing God, and we are on 40 days through the prayers of Jesus. This will be a fantastic study, a journey to pray more like Christ by Tim Cameron. It's not mandatory to purchase the book. Uh, the adult 
Zoom Bible study is at 6.30 on Wednesdays. Uh, they are studying the epistles. For more information, please contact Ted Morgan. The children's Bible study via Zoom for grades 1st through 5th will be held on Thursday evenings at 5.30 p.m. For more information, please contact Evangelist R.C. Strahan. Please join us for Friday Bible study at 11.50 or noontime via conference call is 667-770-1025. The access code is 418-515. We are studying the book of Psalms. Uh, for more information, please contact Pastor Williams. Join us on Facebook for our Facebook night live services at 7.30 p.m. You may also connect on Facebook at facebook.com slash roosevelt.williams.315. We are studying walking with Jesus. Kids Praise Children's Church is on second and fourth Sundays at 930. Parents, please encourage your children to join us for that Zoom meeting. And on this fifth Sunday, uh, those children who are prepared to do the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed and other things we have learned, uh, we want you to join in with us uh, so that we can begin to give out those prizes and high fives. Remember, you can give to St. John's online through Givelify. Download the mobile app or go online and type St. John AME Church and see a picture of the church or pastor. Our birthdays for October the 9th through the 15th for Clara Douglas and Sandra Harris on the 10th, Maurice Patterson Jr. on the 11th, Bernice Price on the 12th, David Davis on the 13th, Paul Blackman, and I know I saw Paul this morning, on the 15th. Amen. May Amen. God's awesome Amen. blessings Amen. be upon you all on your birthday and many more years to come. Happy birthday. Let's not forget prayers for the sick and shut in. Audrey Anderson, Reverend Marion Brock Jr., Olga Moore, Robert Williams, and Irene Riley. morning before the prayer there's a presentation um, on behalf of the church pastor would you stand I like giving orders pastor would you stand please Tony I can't see that far <laughs> Reverend Sheila with our Sincerest appreciation for your service. We, the church, honor Pastor Roosevelt Williams in recognition for the many years of faithful service and dedication. Y'all know our cry. Ensuring that the needs of God's people were met, this is presented to St. John's, presented from St. John's AME Church to Pastor Roosevelt Williams, October 9th, 2022. Welcome, Pastor. As a bag, you can keep, Pastor. There are cards at the back of the church. It's always praying time. Lord, you see it all. You saw it before we knew it. Your word prepared us for it, but Father, we, we refuse to pay attention. Jesus, you have kept us through so much. We are all survivors, God. As your children, Jesus, help us to be more obedient. Help us, Lord, to be hearers and doers of your holy word. Father, help us to learn to be like Noah. 
and less like Jonah. Help us to follow your commands to the letter, Lord, and to walk out what you have given us to do. Jesus, help us to be believers. Help us to trust and obey God. Help us to know, God, that what your plan is for our lives is better than anything that we could come up with. God, we have got to know that it's not what it looks like because the report of the enemy that is ringing so loud in our ears is a lie. It looks bad, Father. It looks awful. Our days are dark even in the light of the noon. But you have promised us that they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength, that they shall mount up on wings like eagles, Lord, and that is the promise of your word that we are holding on to. Father, we are tired, we are depressed, we are sad. Father, we have had to bury many before what we thought were their times, but Father, we will not doubt, we will not grow weary in well-doing, we will not grow faint of heart. Father, we shall believe what you have said. Father, we will carry on because we know not what the end looks like, but we know who is there. We know God who is the lifter of our heads, and we are going to trust and obey. We are going to trust and obey. God, we are going to trust and obey. Yes, we are tired, but you have told us many many times who you are in your book from Genesis to Revelations you have shown us over and over again what will happen if we will just do what you have told us to do God you are our comforter you have wiped many tears you have lifted us up God when we could not see where we were going you have been a light unto our path when our eyes have been blinded when our hearts have been cold you have been a comfort to us you have been what we could not see that we even needed father you have given us knowledge that we could not have known because you can see around doorways you have seen down through the generations father you have been our all in all we must trust and obey we must trust and obey we must trust and obey I heard that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal you God are my everything I must put it in your hands and I must walk away from whatever my it is that tries to tell me that I can't I must put it in your hands, Father, and I must walk away from whatever my it is that says that I cannot. Father, I must put it in your hands when the report of the enemy says that the big bomb is going to go off and that we're going to die. I must put it in your hands, Lord, when doom and destruction is what man says. Lord, I must put it in your hands because your word tells me that you love us and that you care for us and that we must cast our cares upon you that you love your children that you love us and that you care for us father and that if we will just submit that if we will just be obedient that if we will just trust and obey that if we will just trust and obey that if we will just trust and obey. Father, we give it all to you, all of our cares. If we just give it to you, God, it's yours anyway. All of it is yours. And that if this world that we know now, if it all ceases tomorrow, God, that you could just reach down and you could make another one because in Genesis it tells us that you did the whole thing and what we know now as days, that you did it in six and on the seventh one, God, you rested. So why should I worry? 
Why should I be afraid? Because in you, I live, I move, and I have my being. And you, God, you care for us. And we love you. And we thank you. And you, God, you are our all.
just tell Jesus, oh, we're in good shape. We've got some praising men. We got some worshiping men. Hallelujah. We know that the households are in good shape because our leaders are praising and worshiping God. Just tell Jesus everything, everything. Don't hold back. It'll be all right. Verses 7 through 17. Again, that's Psalms, chapter 51, starting in verse 7, reading through verse 17. And it reads, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. A word of God for the people of God. Going to St. John's. Have to wave up the grandbaby so I can go home.
is he he's my strength when I would fall oh he dies he dies each day for me you see God is God is he's my all in all yes he has he has said he has set me Amazing grace, how sweet that sound, that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but thank God because of him I can see. Oh, God, he's been smiling, he smiled on me. As he smiled on you, yes, he smiled on me, yes, my Lord, my Lord, smiled on me, he's been so good to me, woke me up this morning, started me on my way, he's a mighty, 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 mighty good God, put food on my table, lawyer when I need one. He's been my doctor. All you have to do is say, Jesus, 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 thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Has the Lord smiled on anybody? I know he smiled on you. Oh, that was weak. Has the Lord smiled on you? One in this place. Come on, has the Lord smiled on you? I know he has because we wouldn't be in this presence even right now. He smiled on us. He loves us, church. He loves us. He loves us. Gave his best for us. He smiled on us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for smiling upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for reminding us of your care for your grace and your mercy, for reminding us of your deep love you have for us. Love that's so deep, so wide, that it caused you to give your very best, and that's in the person of your son, Jesus the Christ. I thank you, Lord God, for your love. What love is this? That a man will lay down his life for his friends. My Lord, my God. Thank you, Jesus, for being obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus the Christ. And Jesus, we thank you for not leaving us here by ourselves because you said it is better for us if you go. 
because if you don't go, the comforter won't come. So we thank you for the comforting power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Father. Holy Spirit, have your way with us, in us, and through us today. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for being God in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people agreed by saying amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord has smiled upon us. You heard the reading of Psalm 51, verses 7 through 17. Just want to read verses 16 and 17 one more time. We can put those on the screen. Verses 16 and 17 of Psalm 51. A repentant psalm. Psalm 51. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. The title of this sermon, this is actually uh, part two of Trauma and Drama. This is part two. What do you do when the trauma and drama is your fault? What do you do when the stuff, when the mess, when the confusion, when the problems, when the situations are indeed your fault? David is an interesting guy. Y'all know David, the eighth son of Jesse, the one that was uh, the eighth and the youngest son, the one that was out there and he was tending his father's flock. And, uh, you know, Samuel called for the boys because God had told Samuel there would be another king over Israel, a king after his own heart. He called all the seven boys before him, but the eighth was yet out there in the fields doing the work of what a younger child would do. He was tending his father's flock. And when they called him in, the Bible says that he was ruddy and good looking, and he had been tanned by the sun, and he was out there doing what God had called him to do and what his father had called him to do. And Samuel said, this is the one, this is the boy, this is the one who will be the next real king over Israel. So we give God praise for anointing David. Now, God anointed him at that point, and it took many years for him to step into the throne. How many of y'all know that God has this thing called process? And even though God tells you something now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen now, but it means that God has spoken something, and oftentimes God wants to get it in your spirit. Oftentimes God wants you to speak it forth out of your own mouth so that you will believe it yourself and begin to walk in what he's called you to walk in so that things shall come to pass. And even though David, you know, David was out there and he was doing what God had called him to do, first of all, he began to fight on behalf of God. But even before that, while he was out there being a shepherd boy, he was shepherding his father's flock, and he was singing songs unto God. He was worshiping and praising God. And while he was out there with the sheep, he was learning how to be a king. He was learning how to be a pastor, so to speak. He was learning how to lead people. And so at a certain time, God began to set a stage for David to come forth because all the people were afraid of the Philistines. They were afraid of the enemies of God. Everybody except David. David, this 17, 18 year old boy said, I'll fight him. And you know, David, you know, the king said, Saul said, David, when you fight the enemy of God, when you fight Goliath, who represents the enemies of God, I want you to put on my armor. Tall, Saul was a big man. And David tried to put on his armor. He said, I can't use this. I can't move in this. It doesn't fit me. What am I saying? Use what God has given you. Stop trying to walk in what God has given other people and use what God has given you. Have faith in what God has given you. Whatever gifts and whatever talents God has given you, use that for the glory of God. We know the rest of the story. David slew Goliath, and it was all over with. But David was a shepherd. David was a fighter. Because before even Goliath, he had faith in God. And God had allowed him to kill a lion and a bear. So he knew how to fight for God. So David was a worshiper. David was a fighter. David knew how to just, just, just praise and worship God. But guess what? David also knew how to dance. Yeah, this was a dancing king. In 2 Samuel 
chapter 6. I think we know this story. 2 Samuel chapter 6. It tells the story of that when they got the Ark of the Covenant, when they got what represented God's presence back into God's people. They were about to take it into the holy city. They got the Ark of the Covenant. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That, that box, that box that's overlaid with gold. That box that had the angels on the top of it. The box that had the cherubim on the top. That box that inside it had um, the rod that budded that Aaron had. Inside it had some manna. It had some, some things that were particular, but that box represented the presence of God. And when they found the Ark of the Covenant, David got excited. He said, I'm going to bring it back unto my people. But because they didn't carry it right, because they put it on a cart instead of carrying it like the priests were supposed to carry it, a couple of men died. So David got a little depressed, but then he began to remember what God says. Churches always remember, it's always good to remember what God has said. And there is a way to praise. There is a way to worship. Then the Bible tells us that we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So what about saying, don't just run before God and say, Father, give me, give me, give me. Why don't you give him some praise? Why don't you give him some worship first? There's a way to come into the very presence of God. So when they began to carry the presence of God in the proper way, David got excited, Mrs. Brown. David got excited, and he began to dance before the Lord. And the Bible said he had taken his kingly robes off, and he had a linen ephod, and he began to twirl around. He began to twirl around, and he was dancing, and he was worshiping. Now, this was a king now, the one that was supposed to be dignified. The one that's supposed to be over the people. But the king knew how to praise God. I'm scared of preachers who don't know how to give God praise. I'm scared of preachers when it's praise and worship. You sitting there all smut. I'm scared of you because you don't recognize who God is. So David danced. And he danced. And he danced. But you know what? Everybody ain't happy with your dancing. David danced before God. But his wife, Micah, said, hmm, the Bible says she despised him for giving God praise. She said, while you're twirling around, the young maidens are seeing all your undergarments. And David said, I'm going to praise God even more because I did this before the Lord. So she despised him. But look at this. It's partially because he was praising and worshiping God, but she despised him because David did something else. See, we're still talking about drama and trauma, right? David did something else. Okay, let's back up for a little bit. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, Saul had given his daughter, Michael, to David as a wife. Then Saul, being consumed with the devil, ran David away. So David was a fugitive. So even though Michael was his wife, Saul ran David away for a couple of years. And in between that time, Michael married another guy, Patiel, son of Laish. So Michael married another guy because she assumed that her husband wasn't coming back. Y'all get the picture? Michael was married to David. Saul runs David off. Michael assumes that David's not coming back. She marries, Saul gives her to another man. And the Bible, and I know that they were happily married, because look at this. When David came back, David said, I've killed the Philistines like you told me to do. Give me my wife back. And this is after a couple of years. And I know that Micah was a little sad. I know she had a happy marriage. How do I know that? Because in 2 Samuel chapter 3, the Bible says the party of the husband ran behind her, Miss Brown crying. When David came, he ran behind her crying. That's my wife. He took my baby. And I know she was feeling something too. Look at this. David had wives. David had concubines. He did it again. This was before what I preached last week. David took this man's wife. He didn't have to have her, but legally he could get her. His main concern was being connected to the king. His main concern was being kin to the king. So he took another man's wife again. 
drama, trauma. So while he's dancing before the Lord, while he's worshiping God, Micah's looking at him and saying, you rascal, you dirty dog, you took me from my husband. So while he's praising, see, everybody's not happy when you praise and when you worship, because some folk know the truth. So he's praising and worshiping and everything, and his own wife is looking at him saying, mm. drama, trauma, caused by King David. Now, y'all don't get me wrong. David did a lot of good. He did a lot of good, but he also did some things that were morally corrupt. And that's much like most of us, I dare say all of us, we've got some great qualities, but behind the scenes there's some stuff going on that God is trying to get at. As I said last week, from the pulpit to the pew, all of us have some areas that need some work. All of us cause drama, all of us cause trauma in one way or another. So we see here that David, even though he's dancing before the Lord, David is a worshiper. David is a mighty warrior, but David has some issues. And in this case, he's still dealing with the drama that he caused. Last week, I told you all in 2 Samuel chapter 12, y'all know that whole story about what he did with Bathsheba and all of that. So we see here that David has a history of womanizing. David has a history of trying to be a little pimp. David has a history of being a little player. David has a history of doing some things that he shouldn't do. Now, he still loved God. I can't take that away from him. He still was God. He was still a man after God's own heart, but David had some issues. And so God is trying to deal with his issues just like he's trying to deal with my issues and your issues and everybody else's issues. Somebody say issues. All of us have them. They may be big, they may be small, but all of us got some stuff that God is trying to highlight. So when we get to Psalm 51, Nathan confronts David about all his stuff, about all his mess, particularly about Bathsheba and your son dying. And, you know, you took another man's wife again, and you had a baby by her and tried to cover it up, and the baby died. And now, because all that has happened, this self-imposed drama. David gets it. Psalm 51 is all about saying, God, I'm so sorry. God, I messed up. God, I have done a terrible thing. You know, it is a terrible thing when we don't recognize we've sinned before God. It is a terrible thing when we don't fess up to what we've done. It's a terrible thing when we sweep it under the rug. It's a terrible thing we, we, when we don't acknowledge to the Father, Father, I have sinned and fallen short in your sight. But that's what Psalm 51 is all about. So David says, look at verse 7. He says, purge me with hyssop. Now purge, that word really means to, to, to remove a stain. To remove a stain. Purge me with hyssop. He's saying, not only remove the stain, but they would take the hyssop, they would dip it in the blood of a sacrificed animal and just sprinkle it all over. So David's saying, I want you to clean me up to the point I'm just bloody. Clean me up. He said, purge me with hyssop. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I know somebody who came here over 2,000 years ago that he saved us by his own blood. That sprinkled his own blood over us that died on the cross for our sins, that were raised from the dead on, on the third day, and his name is Jesus. So David got sense enough to repent. You see, David sinned really, really big, so he repented really, really big. He wrote, y'all, the majority of the Psalms are written by David. David said, this is what I did, and I want you to set it to music. David said, I did this in the sight of God. And let me tell you everything that I did. So David right now is getting before God and begging God's pardon. He's saying, God purge me. I want you to wash me whiter than snow. David said, I want you to scrub me inside and out. As I said last week, this is not another happy clapping sermon. This is about us getting ourselves right before God. Because all of us in one way or another need to be scrubbed by God. Cleansed by God, washed in the blood of Jesus, repenting for our sins, and not thinking that everything's okay. 
You see that thing called grace and mercy? It is a gift. But if you pervert the grace and mercy, it is a slap in God's face. Paul said, so that I, should I sin that grace may abound? In other words, should I test God? Should I just do stuff and don't worry about it because God forgives me? Don't put the Lord to a foolish test. Always, that's what the altar is all about. That's what it's all about. We get a chance to come before a loving God and say, Father, I have sinned. Wash me. Purge me. Clean me with hyssop. Make me whiter than snow. He says, make me hear joy and gladness. Hallelujah. That the bones you have broken may rejoice. In other words, Lord God, you have humbled me to the point, and I recognize who you are. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Then David depends on the creative power of God. He says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He says, create in me. It kind of harkens back to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created. Now, the created is taken from the word bara. It means it's, it's created in a way that's unique to God. So David is saying, Lord God, I want you to create in me a clean heart, and only you can do it. Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast or a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And David said, oh, whatever you do, don't take your Holy Ghost from me. Y'all don't understand what this is all about because at this point, the Holy Spirit, not a whole lot of folk knew about the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was, the day of Pentecost hadn't come yet. So uh, God would anoint prophets, priests, and kings with his spirit. But David knew something about the Holy Spirit. David knew something about the power of God. David knew that God instructed him on how to lead. David knew that God gave him the power to fight. David knew that God caused him to defeat his enemies. David knew about the power of the Holy Spirit. So he said, whatever you do, Lord God, don't take your spirit from me. Because David knew he couldn't lead. He couldn't be a king. He couldn't do anything. Y'all, we got to stop depending on ourselves. We all need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us and appoint us toward the Father. He says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. In verse 12 and 13, I really connect it in a unique way. He says, restore to me of the joy of your salvation. Then, verse 13, I will teach transgressors your ways. In other words, Lord God, if you give me my joy back, I'll begin to teach others. Lord God, if you just clean me up out of my mess, I'll begin to share with others. Lord God, if you get me out of this, I'll share my testimony. Lord God, if you get me out of this mess, when I see somebody else going through the same mess, I'll help them out too. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's what the deal is. God, now how many has, has the Lord got you out of something before? Something before. And you're still here, right? God got you out of something before. And the worst thing we can do before God is watch another brother or sister do the same thing. And we're too prideful to tell them that was me. Let me show you how to get out. Let me walk you out. Let me tell you how God cleansed me. Or maybe let me tell you how God healed me. Let me tell you how God delivered me. I'm not saying that God would do it the exact same way, but I am telling you that God is God. And God has a way of doing things. And I'm here to be a living witness. So David says, if you get me out of this, if you bring me back into your presence, if you bring the Holy Ghost back, I'll teach others. I'll teach transgressors your ways. Because as David was a king after God's own heart, he did some really big stuff that displeased God. All right. He says, deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your praises. And I just want to end with this. In verses 16 and 17, David is saying, you do not desire sacrifice or else I will give it. You don't desire me necessarily to sing in the choir or else I would do that. You don't necessarily desire me to just get on the usher board. If that was enough, 
I would do it. You don't just desire me to bring my tithes and my offerings before God. Because if that was enough, I would do it. See, oftentimes we try to do stuff. Do stuff to atone for stuff. We try to say, I'm going to be good instead of saying, God, I'm sorry. And telling that other person, I'm sorry. We try to do stuff. He said, now, if, if that was good enough, that would be okay. He said, God, but you don't want those kind of sacrifices. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite heart. A broken and a contrite heart. Have you ever been broken before God before? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I have. When God has to humble you. When God gets you to that point, David says, in a broken and a contrite heart, you will not despise. Because you know what? It's just like when God was speaking to Jeremiah. When he's talking about the potter and the clay. And see, sometimes we get it twisted. We think we're the potter. But we're really the clay. And so we have to turn ourselves over to God and say, Lord, you shape and mold us in the way that you want us to be. Lord, we want to be vessels of honor and not dishonor. So, Lord God, instead of me trying to run everything, I'm going to surrender and say, Lord God, have your way. I'm going to surrender and say, Lord God, do what you want to do in my life. Lord, I'm going to listen to your spirit. I'm going to listen to your voice. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. I surrender everything. I surrender. So the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. These, oh God, you will not despise. So there have been points in our lives that we have caused trauma. There have been points in our lives where we have caused trauma drama. Now last week we talked about David and Bathsheba and Bathsheba was really primarily a victim because of what had happened to her. And the baby had nothing to do with it either. So they were the recipients of trauma and drama. But every now and then is me, is me, is me, oh Lord, standing in a need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, it's me. And guess what, y'all? It's usually us. Usually. But if we can say like David, create in me a clean heart and renew your right spirit within me, I think God can get something done. I think he can get something done. And guess what? He wants to get it done through us. Amen? Let's all stand all over the church. We may not be quite like David, but God still wants us to declare, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. God still wants us to come before him and to be who he's called us to be. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, this is your time to come, your opportunity to come. If you want to become a member of the body of Christ if you want to be a believer if you want to be saved this is your time to come also if there's anyone that needs a church home if you if you would like to link up with this household of faith this is your opportunity to come anyone at all this is your time to come Amen. Amen. Everybody all right? Y'all are mighty quiet today, but that's all right. God is working on us, each and every one of us. Aren't you glad you're not the same as you were a few years ago? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a continual work. He's working on us. He's cleaning us up for his glory. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. It is now time for Holy Communion. Holy Communion. We would ask that the families. Oh, Lord, Lord.
Lord have mercy. Baptism. Well, I got the first part right. Holy baptism. Amen. If, if the families would come of the children to be baptized, if y'all would come and stand. conceived and born in sin and that our Savior Christ said none can enter into the kingdom of God except they be regenerated and born anew of water and of the Holy Ghost I beseech you to call upon God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ that of his bounteous mercy he will grant to these children that thing which by nature he cannot have and she cannot have that they be baptized with water and the Holy Ghost and received into Christ's holy church and be made a lively member of the same. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy great mercy did save Noah and his family in the ark from perishing by water and also did safely lead the children of Israel, the people through the Red Sea, figuring thereby thy holy baptism and by the baptism of thy well-beloved son Jesus Christ in the river of Jordan did sanctify water for this holy sacrament we beseech thee of thine infinite mercies that thou wouldst look upon these children wash and sanctify them with the Holy Spirit that they, being received into the ark of Christ's church, and being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, and rooted in love, may so pass the waves of this troublesome world, that finally they may come to the land of everlasting life, there to reign with you, Lord God, world without end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh, merciful God, grant that the old Adam in these children be buried, and the new person may be rise up. Amen. Grant that all carnal affections may die in these children, and that all things belonging to thee may be raised up. Amen. Grant that these children may have power and strength to have victory and to triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Amen. Grant that whoever is dedicated to thee by our office and ministry may also be endued with heavenly virtues and everlasting rewards through thy mercy. O oh, blessed Lord God, who doth live in govern all things world without end amen almighty everlasting god whose most dearly beloved son jesus christ for the forgiveness of our sins did shed out of his most precious side both water and blood and gave commandment to his disciples that they should go teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost Regard, we beseech thee, the supplications of thy congregation.
congregation. Sanctify this water for this holy sacrament and grant that these children be baptized, that they may receive the fullness of your grace and ever remain in the number of your faithful and elect children through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we say together, Amen. Dearly beloved, for as much as this child is now presented by you for Christian baptism, you must remember that it is your part and duty to see that the, these children be taught as soon as they shall be able to learn the nature and end of this holy sacrament, and that these children may know these things the better. You shall call them to give regular attendance upon the appointed means of grace, such as the ministry of the word and the public and private worship of God. And further, you shall provide that these children shall read the Holy Scriptures and learn the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Catechism, and all other things which a Christian ought to know and believe that these children's souls help in order that they may be brought up to lead a virtuous and holy life, remembering always that baptism doth represent unto us that inward purity which disposeth us to follow the example of our Savior Christ, that as he died and rose again for us, so should we who are baptized die unto sin and rise again unto righteousness, continually mortifying all corrupt affections and daily proceedings in all virtue and godliness. Do you therefore solemnly engage to fulfill these duties for as far as life in your power, the Lord being your helper? Hear the words of the gospel written by St. Mark in the 10th chapter in the 13th verse. They brought young children to Christ that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Amen. baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Deacon Cleveland, baptize you in the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You did great. Good. All right. And let the church say amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I also just want to give a charge to the family. Live in such a way that the children will see the Christ in you. Do everything you can to just be a living witness. Amen? Amen. Bring them up in the fear of God. Bring them up. Bring them up in church. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I ask that you bless these families and bless them indeed. 
We thank you, Lord God, for putting in their hearts to bring these children to be baptized in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for just blessing them. We thank you that these young ladies will grow up, Lord God, to be virtuous women. Lord, we ask for your protection over them all the days of their lives. Lord, we just thank you for your angels that surround them as they dash their foot against the stone. And we give you praise, Lord God, for giving the parents and grandparents and family everything that they need, Lord God, to just make sure that the children have what they need, and they need you. So bless them. Bless these babies. Keep them in the name of Jesus. And all God's people agreed by saying, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And let the church say amen one more time. If our hearts and minds are clear, let us stand and praise God from whom all our blessings flow. Father, we thank you for blessing us. Even if we were the cause of the trauma and drama, we thank you for forgiving us, for washing us clean, for creating in us a clean heart. Now, Lord God, watch over us as we depart this place, but never from your holy presence. Keep us safe in all of our ways. In the matchless name of Jesus and all God's people, agree by saying. Blessed week in the name of Jesus.